right now on 18 Eyewitness News. One insurance company is trying to educate on Obamacare. Also, the Senate Interim Committee on Medicaid Transformation and Reform held a hearing Wednesday. Plus, Egyptian officials say more than 500 people are dead after the military move to disperse protesters Wednesday. And it looks like the sunshine will continue throughout southeast Missouri. For coverage you can count on, 18 Eyewitness News starts right now. 18 Eyewitness News starts now. Thank you for joining us. I'm Dustin Kopp. Our top story at this hour. You've been hearing for months that your health insurance premiums could be going up thanks to Obamacare. One major insurance provider is trying to educate the public about the reality coming this fall. However, supporters of the Affordable Care Act say that it's just scare tactics. Lori Johnson explains. Blue Cross Blue Shield in North Carolina is taking a hands-on approach to educating the public about health care reform. There's no dumb questions when it comes to health care reform, so we're there for you and we want to help you understand how it impacts you because it, it does impact everybody differently. The insurance giant is taking their education campaign across the state. It set up five offices throughout North Carolina to handle the mad rush the company expects in October. That's when the Affordable Care Act goes into effect. A short video is part of the education process. It teaches viewers about things they may not know about Obamacare, namely the hit their wallets could take. Due to the impacts of the ACA, about half of our customers could see their premiums increase by 50% or more before federal subsidies. Supporters of the ACA say the Blue Cross video is old-fashioned fear-mongering. They want to say, don't blame us and um, don't impose new taxes on us. But on the other hand, they do want people to enroll in their plan. Linker says the video goes further in its speculation, claiming younger, healthier Americans would more likely pay the tax because it's cheaper and the cost of pre-existing conditions will be passed on to other consumers. He says in reality, the insurance companies want to see the law changed, especially the $100 billion in new taxes on them over the next 10 years to help fund Obamacare. Ashley Smart with Blue Cross Blue Shield sees it differently. It's complicated and we want to help consumers understand what's in the law and how it impacts them and their unique situation. Meanwhile, North Carolina leaders turned down $70 million in federal funding to help educate its residents on the new health care laws. Lori Johnson, CBN News. Meanwhile, the Obama administration has missed as many as one-third of the deadlines required in the law, and they have just delayed caps on out-of-pocket insurance costs until 2015. Insurance does not cover 100% of costs, so whatever is left gets passed on to you. On Friday, you could join the Froggy 96 gang and the American Red Cross to save three lives. There will be a blood drive at the Farmington American Legion Hall. Organizer Lori Stone tells 18 Eyewitness News this would be a good time to donate. We're collecting blood for patients that need it. The summer is typically a difficult time to collect enough blood for patients that need it. So we're really thankful for the support of Froggy 96 and, and are excited about the blood drive. To make an appointment, visit our website, kdkz18.com, where we have a link to the American Red Cross. <music> Temperatures across the area right now, not bad out there at all. It's beautiful, and it's been a beautiful day all day today. 73 in St. Genevieve, Fredertown 72, 73 in Piedmont, and 72 right now in Ellington. Looking ahead, the next several hours this evening, partly sunny sky at 7 p.m., 70 degrees, 64 by 9, partly cloudy sky at midnight, and a temperature of 58. We'll get you more details on your forecast coming up in just a little bit. When 18 Eyewitness News returns, the Senate Interim Committee on Medicaid Transformation and Reform held a hearing Wednesday. You're watching 18 Eyewitness News, coverage you can count on. We all need to take responsibility in our lives uh, and start thinking about how do we want to be treated at the end of our lives. I would definitely say Serenity Hospice Care is an expert in their field. 24 hours a day, seven days a week, there's help a phone call away. If it were me and I was diagnosed with a terminal illness, I absolutely, you know, I would choose Serenity Hospice Care. You're watching 18 Eyewitness News with Fred Dawkins and Dustin Cobb. 
18 Eyewitness News continues. Welcome back to 18 Eyewitness News. The Senate Interim Committee on Medicaid Transformation and Reform held a hearing Wednesday at the state capitol. The hearing was to hear testimony regarding potential reforms and alternative approaches for the financing, payment, and delivery of health care in Missouri. Senator Gary Romine of Farmington chairs the Interim Committee and discusses telemedicine. To learn more about the Senate Interim Committee on Medicaid Transformation and Reform, you can visit our website, kdkz18.com. Uninsured Missouri residents planning to purchase health insurance under the centerpiece of federal health care reform are still waiting for details as the start of enrollment looms. The insurance exchange opens on October 1st. The federal government plans to publish details online after final certification decisions are made early next month. Some Missouri consumer advocates worry that the lack of details will make it harder for residents to participate in the exchange. The federal government is running the Missouri program after state voters approved a November ballot bearing state participation. Missouri is one of 19 states that ceded control of its Affordable Care Act exchange to the federal government. Al-Qaeda is getting more sophisticated each day, planning terror attacks with encrypted internet message boards and special software to disguise their activities on chat rooms. U.S. officials say that's where they found the recent plot to clo that closed down 19 U.S. diplomatic posts across the Muslim world. Still, it's unlikely that top Al-Qaeda leaders like Yemen al-Zira al have gone digital or even used phones. Al-Qaeda leaders are still using low-tech methods to get their messages to tech-savvy foot soldiers. That means all the National Security Agency's digital surveillance isn't likely to track them down. Two children were seriously injured Wednesday night in an ATV accident in Wayne County. The Missouri State Highway Patrol says 13-year-old McKenna Black of Mill Springs was driving an ATV on private property south of Desark when she lost control of the ATV and it overturned, ejecting everyone on the vehicle. Five-year-old Braden Barton and two-year-old Alana Smith, both of Desark, were seriously injured. Barton was flown to Children's Hospital in St. Louis. Smith was taken by ambulance to an Iron County hospital and then also flown to Children's Hospital in St. Louis. No word on their current condition. When we come back, more than 500 people are dead after the military moved to disperse protesters Wednesday. Details when 18 Eyewitness News returns. Take control of your future by enrolling at the Unitech Career Center. Discover a new career with Unitech's nursing programs or the opportunities with Unitech's sheet metal fabricating program. Or turn your hobby into a career with Unitech's power sports equipment program. From electrical trades to automotive technology programs, the first step to a well-paying future starts at the Unitech Career Center, Raider Road in Bonterre. For adult information, call 358-3011. For high school information, call 358-2271. Welcome back. Egyptian officials say more than 500 people are dead after the military moved to disperse protesters Wednesday. The army stormed two large sit-ins by Muslim Brotherhood who were protesting the ouster of former President Mohamed Morsi. Now reports are surfacing the Brotherhood is targeting Christians in the black backlash. Chris Mitchell reports. More than 300 protesters were killed and thousands wounded when the military cleared the two protest camps of the Muslim Brotherhood in Cairo. More than 40 police died during the fighting. While many nations, including the U.S., condemned the violence, Egyptian authorities said they couldn't allow the anarchy to continue within their own capital. Some Egyptian media also reported the Muslim Brotherhood used the camps as mini terrorist bases to torture and murder collaborators and rape women. Despite the military crackdown, the Muslim Brotherhood called for more demonstrations. Anyone who thinks the Muslim Brotherhood is just going to go quietly here, just go away and accept military rule, does not understand the Brotherhood, does not understand their ideology, does not understand their history. CBN News terrorism analyst Eric Steckelbeck and author of The Brotherhood, America's Next Great Enemy, warns the end is not in sight. This is a group that is steeped in violence, in jihad. They're the original modern Islamic terrorist group. I predict and I fear that the Brotherhood will declare a jihad against the Egyptian military. Things will get bloodier and a whole lot more nasty before they get better. During and after the crackdown, things got much worse for Egypt's Christians. The Muslim Brotherhood and their supporters attacked dozens of churches, 
Christian businesses, and individuals. The Muslim Brotherhood blames Egypt's Christians for supporting the ouster of Mohamed Morsi. Their retaliation is putting Egypt's Christian minority at great risk. They're asking Christians worldwide to pray for their protection. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. The Southeast Missouri Food Bank is once again giving away food. The event is scheduled for Saturday, August 24th at 10 a.m. at the Clearwater Family Youth Center in Piedmont. Organizer Missy McGowan says that the mobile food pantry fills a gap. The mobile food pantry is actually meant to fill a gap. You have clients that go out to the traditional food pantry, which is a brick and mortar building, but this is actually a truck that we load full of food. We go out to different locations, we set up tables, and we have volunteers on site, and we hand out food to clients. Some of the guidelines for the event include only one person per household may receive food, you must be present to receive food, and you may be asked to provide a picture ID. For more information, call Missy at 573-651-0400. Officials in Oregon are following up on a complaint a gay couple filed against a Christian-owned bakery. The couple had asked sweet cakes by Melissa to make their wedding cake, but the bakery owners refused on religious grounds. The state's Bureau of Labor and Industries decided to investigate whether the bakery violated a state law passed in 2007. The law protects against discrimination of homosexual, bisexual, and transgendered people in public accommodations. Exemptions from the law extend to religious organizations, but not to private business owners. When we come back, I'll relay a storm tracker weather forecast. We'll be right back. On the road, off the road, or on the water, your ultimate outdoor toy store, Midwest Sports Center in Farmington, has what you're looking for. Street bikes, dirt bikes, ATVs, side-by-sides, jet skis. Midwest Sports Center has the largest selection and the absolute lowest prices. Get to Midwest Sports Center on Walker Drive, Farmington today to see for yourself. Midwest Sports Center, your ultimate outdoor toy store. Here is your Storm Tracker forecast. Welcome back. Partly sunny skies out there, and it's 72 degrees is our current temperature, and that's what it feels like. Been a beautiful day today. Dew point set 53, 49% humidity, and an east northeast wind at 5 miles per hour. Looking at temperatures across the area, still on the nice side, 73 right now in St. Genevieve, 71 in Potosi, 72 in Frederictown, Piedmont right now at 73. Looking at temperatures across the state of Missouri. Not bad as well. 73 right now in Columbia, Springfield 75, 77 in Kansas City, and 74 in St. Louis. This is not anything like we've been seeing for the last several years in this time of August. Plenty of sunshine remaining. Temperatures on the nice side. Feels like fall out there. That is for sure. Let's take a look at that forecast, shall we? For your Friday, we do have those showers and thunderstorms. Could be heavy at times. Off to the west, not going to affect our weather at all. We're going to see nice weather here in southeast Missouri. Here's what our forecast looks like. If you're heading out and about uh, throughout the evening hours, 7 p.m. temperature, about 70 degrees with partly cloudy sky, partly sunny, uh, not bad at all. By 9 p.m., 64 and 58 by midnight. Our forecast for tonight, beautiful evening on tap, 51 to 55 for your overnight low, partly cloudy skies, light to variable winds. Then for tomorrow, another beautiful day, 75 to 81, partly sunny and a light to variable wind. Let's take a look at the next three days here in southeast Missouri. Plenty of sunshine, temperatures not bad as, as well. 75 on your Friday, 80 on Saturday, Sunday 82, plenty of sunshine. The next several days in the big seven day forecast, not bad as well. But we're starting to warm things back up a little bit. Monday and Tuesday in the mid to upper 80s. But look at that, we're cooling back off into the lower 80s on Wednesday and Thursday. Don't forget, you can get the latest weather information at our website. It's kdkz18.com. I'm Stacy Johnson. Are you hungry for a recipe that will feed a family of four a feast for less than 15 bucks? We'll see what's cooking just ahead on Money Talks News. Get your latest storm tracker weather forecast daily on the radio. Froggy 96, 95.9 FM, and Kickin' Country 105, 104.9 FM. When you're recovering from a traumatic injury, the last thing you need is an unexpected bill. Because most health insurers pay only a part of air transport, Archair Medical has a solution, the Omni Advantage Program. 
For a membership fee of $49 per year, Omni Advantage guarantees you and other covered family members will not have to pay anything that your health insurer doesn't provide. In an extraordinary emergency, the last thing you need to worry about is cost. Contact Archair Medical or visit them on the web to discover all the advantages of Omni Advantage. Welcome back. We all want to get the most for our money, especially when it comes to food. So how about a meal for a family of four for less than 15 bucks? This week's Frugal Family Feast recipe makes a leftover roast chicken into a scrumptious chowder. I'm Stacy Johnson, and this is Chef Rich Matthews. He's an instructor at the International Culinary School right here at Art Institute. Now, Rich is gonna make for us a feast that's gonna feed a family of four for less than 15 bucks, and he's gonna do it by showing me what to do with yesterday's leftover roast chicken. What are you gonna do, Chef? We're gonna do roast chicken corn chowder, and here's what goes in it. We're gonna use chicken broth, fresh corn, bacon, new potatoes, chicken meat, uh, fresh thyme, peppercorns, milk, onions, carrots, bay leaf, flour, and butter. I can't wait to see how you're gonna put all this together. So what do you do? Well, I'm gonna make a stock with my leftover chicken carcass from the roast chicken I had the night before. Okay. I'm gonna add carrots, celery, and onion to that, some bay leaf, peppercorn, and fresh thyme. Let this cook slowly, even overnight in your crock pot if you want. Okay. Then I'm gonna strain that so I have a nice chicken stock, thicken it with flour and butter, and then I'm gonna add the rest of my ingredients, the milk, corn, bacon, potatoes, and chicken. Oh, you were telling me, what makes a chowder? Chowders uh, classically have potato and some sort of pork product like bacon. Which I did not know. So basically, you're just taking your chicken, boiling it, thickening it, and, and then adding all the stuff to adding it. Adding all the rest. And this is what it's gonna look like when it comes out, and it looks really, really good. Let's have a taste. I can't believe you did this with leftover chicken. How much did it cost? Well, since you're using leftover chicken, this is about $3 a person. Three bucks. Now that's a meal, folks. You need the recipe. Look at this, it's so good. Go to moneytalksnews.com, do a search for Frugal Family Feast. You'll find something delicious. For Money Talks News, I'm Stacy Johnson. As Stacy said, he's got more information and links at his website. To get there, just go to our website and click on the Money Talks link under the Lifestyles menu. Have you ever wanted to create your own light bulb? Jason Lindsay, AKA Mr. Science with Hooked on Science, shows us how to create a light bulb by using a few ingredients from around the house. My science helper over here, Brenna and I, have a pretty cool experiment. We're gonna show you how to create your own light bulb. Brenna, have you ever wanted to create your own light bulb? Yeah! How about you? You can and all you need are a few ingredients from around the house. Give me a quick five for science. Don't break my hand. Oh, whoa, good gravy. What we have in front of us is a toilet paper holder attached to it with masking tape is our alligator clips right here. You can get those alligator clips at your local department store. Bridged between the alligator clips is a piece of 0.7 graphite for a mechanical pencil. That's the, the graphite that works the best. Brenda, what do you have there? Six batteries taped together. Yes, yeah, six batteries taped together. Let's put those right down here. I want you to hold the toilet paper roll and let's make our light bulb work. We're going to close the circuit. Are you ready? Wow, that's getting pretty bright there. Look at that. Creating your own light bulb and the filament just broke. Learn more at hookedonscience.org. Go to our website and click on Hooked on Science under the lifestyle menu for this experiment and others that might get you and your family hooked on science. We'll be right back. Battery problems. It happens every time you want to do something. You just want to mow the yard, right? You've got to make it to that big meeting on time and your watch quits. You got to be somewhere and your car won't start. Right in the middle of a conversation and the battery conks out on your cell phone for every kind of battery. Welcome back. In today's Your Health, it's estimated that about 1 in 100 children have some form of autism in this country. And for the millions of families it affects, treatment options can be limited. For decades, doctors have prescribed drugs known as psychostimulants for children with autism. But how now researchers are testing a new class of drugs and a new approach for parents. As Clark Powell shows us, the study aims to find out what's better, pills, parents, or both. 
Like most families who deal with autism, the Johnsons say they looked for years to find help for their daughter, Emma. And after volunteering for a different type of medical study, they found it. They couldn't believe how much of an improvement socially that she was really starting to come out of her shell and focus. What made the difference for Emma and what sets this study apart from others is that it seeks to answer a simple question. What's best for kids with autism? Pills? Parents or both. Let's talk about this drawing a little. To find out, Dr. Michael Amon of the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center is helping to conduct the first large scale study of a new pill for autism called Atomoxetine. It actually works on a different uh, neurochemical. And for this reason, uh, we think that there's a better chance that it will work if one of the stimulants has failed to work. It's been approved for years for kids with ADHD, but this is the first time it's being tested in autism. It worked for Emma, but for other kids in this study, there is another component. Not only will doctors measure the effects of a pill, they'll measure the effectiveness of parents. In this study, some parents will be taught professional intervention techniques, allowing doctors to compare and contrast the two. Obviously, it gives us an opportunity to look at each in isolation, but importantly, it enables us to look at the combination of the two treatments and to see if there's a bonus. Doctors say there haven't been many new treatment options for autism in decades, but by studying a new pill and a new role for parents at the same time, that could soon change. At Ohio State's Wexner Medical Center, this is Clark Powell reporting. In addition to Ohio State, this study will involve other medical centers in the Northeast. Experts say psychostimulants were first used to treat kids with ADHD in 1960s and have been expanded to treat some kids on the autism spectrum. Since then, however, there haven't been many other medications developed. That is today's Your Health. We'll be right back. <music> Thank you so much for joining us on 18 Eyewitness News. Stay connected with us by visiting our website, skdkz18.com. We'll see you next time right back here on 18 Eyewitness News. When you see news happening in your area, let us know about it. You can call our news department at 573-701-9590 or email us at news at dawkinsbroadcastgroup.com.